everyone, Karen the Warp Spinster here. Thank you for stopping by my channel and spending some time with me today. Last week we worked on these Dresden plate blades and this week I want to do a little more with that and then some miscellaneous stuff of what else I'm up to this week. The change that I wanted to make or that I want to try is to make it easier to do these inserts. If you remember, we first cut the shape with this ruler. Um, any Dresden plate ruler would work. And then I inserted these colored strips. And because they're at an angle and different widths, then I ended up with, I necessarily had uneven edges here that I had to trim up and even out. And you know, that's a kind of a risky game. So. What I've decided to do, this is just a sample of another one of my black and white prints, and I'm going to cut a strip that is a generous size from, so here's the width of the ruler right here, and I've added a little bit on and just cut a straight strip. And then I cut one of the angles where I'm going to insert a colored strip. And I'm doing that because then it doesn't matter that the edges don't line up perfectly because I have extra that I can then trim off. Now there's going to be more waste here than, there, than with the other method, but they should be of a size that I can use in my crumb stack. So I'm going to insert this strip. No, I'm not. And here's why. If you remember, I, I did a bias strip last week to see if I like the curve across it. So this is bias and it's pretty stretchy. It's just true bias. This is pretty close to true bias. Just my random slice was pretty close to true bias. So I'm doing bias to bias to bias and that's probably not the best thing. So I'm gonna cut another strip here and insert it. And I probably will cut another strip as well. I'm try, I want to try to not mimic the same pattern here because I want it to be to look more random. So I might just cut another one that is going the same direction as this, maybe parallel, probably not, <laughs> just so I have something a little different on this one. When I'm finished with that, I'll come back and we'll do the trimming. And here are the insertions. I have been doing all solid colors before, but I know some of you are not necessarily fans of solids. So I added in a couple of prints here just so you can see how that looks. I did reasonably well on lining up the edges here, um, partly because it's good practice just to do that even when you don't need to, partly because it helps this pattern to line up a little better so the eye doesn't go crazy over it. And honestly, partly because I don't want to look completely incompetent on camera. So now I can take this and I've got plenty of extra here. And remember, because these are just eight inch samples that I have limits to the length of this blade. So for every other blade, I'm using samples of my from my collection. So they are necessarily going to be the shorter pieces. So I'm just going to, I'm trying to figure out where I want these pieces to be on here. And then I can just trim this. And in case you aren't ambidextrous when cutting, I can flip that around, finish trimming that. And now I have a couple of pieces I could put in my crumb pile and use for something else. And I've avoided the, all the angst of trying to get everything lined up and straightened up here. All right. Now, on the alternating ones, these we aren't, we're just leaving the same width. But on the longer blades, every other one, then I am trimming a quarter inch off the edge of each side and then adding on white strips so that the eye has a place to rest. It isn't going from print to print to print and losing track and just getting tired. So I have put those strips on every other one. And this one I'm going to have to 
trim down there and I do want it to be, I don't want these to be at an angle. Uh, some of the others we have done angles at the top when we were doing Dresden pieces in previous permutations of it. And this one I want straight. If anything, I would have wanted it curved because we're mimicking those Viewmaster slide reels. And then I probably will put a solid color here just for continuity around the circle because this is really the main point of what I'm doing because this is the actual photographic slide in the reel. Even though we aren't doing a literal translation, of course. All right, so that is another piece here once I get the slide piece in there. I'm going to trim this just because it will bother me if I don't. All right. And it is purely by happenstance that I have yellow and green here. These are just pieces from my Mod Holiday collection that were on the top of the pile of the uh, crumb piles. So I pulled those out. These may end up not end up right next to each other, or maybe I'll just continue with that green and yellow gold pattern and maybe flip them once in a while, or, you know, maybe I'll switch to other colors. I don't know. It would be more of an accent on these if they are different colors and these are the same color traveling around so that this becomes just part of the circle and these are what stand out. So it will draw the eye more to these, which is what I really want. So we'll see how that goes. I mean, we're just playing and testing things out here. We're gonna make things that we don't like. It's just part of the game of finding things that we do like. So then this piece will have another one of these up here. The other thing that I wanted to show is you remember, I want these pieces to be, sorry, I'm flipping back and forth here. I want these pieces to be different lengths and in some cases, wildly different lengths just because that's how I pictured it in my mind. So you have to go along with me. <laughs> so they are not going to meet in the center here. Zoom out a little here. They are not gonna meet down here in the center and they're going to be some that are going to be quite long moving up to here. So I want to do one of those pieces. And I did get some more black and white fabric. I think I mentioned that I'd ordered a couple of K-Facet prints. Turned out to be much larger scale than I had planned on, but that's okay. That will work out fine. Apparently I didn't order the second K-Facet print. It wasn't on the order form. I'll go back and check again, but um, I may have to order that separately. And then I got a couple other pieces. This one is, oops, sorry, it's from Michael Miller and making it fun. I think that maybe is, I don't know, is that something for Michael Miller or this particular, I don't know if it's stack, sorry, I didn't pay much attention, but it's a Michael Miller fabric. <laughs> And I found these on fabric.com, ordered them through Amazon because I'm prime, so I could get the free shipping. And then this is the um, text one that I ordered. This is from, it must be a Moda, and it's the Alice in Wonderland themed. So it's similar to the um, Old Maid from last Halloween. And this one is a um, Alice in Wonderland, which is, you know, I thought was kind of appropriate. And I'll probably cut, try to cut something that doesn't say happy on the Halloween here, but you can see all mad here, et cetera, that this is, is an Alice in Wonderland thing. So I will also do a blade out of that. And I, uh, we took an older, member of my small quilting group to Missouri Star Quilts yesterday, which is Hamilton's only about two and a half hours from us. And I'd looked around for some black and white prints and I didn't see anything that really tripped my trigger. They had a whole section of K-Facet, but they didn't have any of the black and white. So 
I wasn't able to get more of that. All right, now with this K facet piece, I want to make sure that I'm cutting the same angle as I'm using for all of the others because I want it to end up in a circle. And if you remember, that's why we did this business here where we cut a quarter inch off and added on to the, some to the side and then made sure we trimmed it up and cut it with the same angle. So I want to make this a longer blade than this ruler's length. So this is how long this ruler is. And I want this particular blade to be longer. So I'm going to start it. Sorry, my limited space here. I'm going to start it, say, down here and give myself room to keep angling. So I'm going to have to move it in from here and how far I move it will determine how long I can make this blade. Now, there are limits to how long I want it to be, but I'm going to give myself plenty of room here. And this is a Block Lock Blumen Cogwheels ruler. You could use any Dresden plate ruler. If you are not ambidextrous, do not, at least when you're cutting, do not do this turn your mat, turn your fabric, whatever. Looks like I'll have plenty of room over here for something. Then I'm going to finish out this cut down below, which you can't see, but I'm taking it to the edge here. Now I am going to pull the fabric down and all I have to do is continue that same angle and it will fit into the circle perfectly then. So I'm going to give myself some room here and the edge of my cutting mat is up at the top of your frame and line up this edge um, and then move up as far as I think I want to go. And then I am going to turn the fabric this time just so I probably shouldn't be doing ambidextrous cutting because <laughs> if you aren't ambidextrous, it's going to be dangerous for you. So safety first, safety first, always. You could also, of course, be wearing a glove, protective glove. And I am going to then continue this and then I can cut across here. Now, I just demonstrated that it is easier to cut this into just a rectangular shape and then do the insert and go from there. But I'm not inserting on this particular set. So it's the shorter alternating ones that have the inset strips. And the longer alternating ones that have the sides trimmed off and the white strips inserted so that it um, gives that rest area for the eye. Now, this is not a pure, this is a warmer white than this white on either of these. That's probably okay with me. I'll have to see, but I think it's probably okay. It at least will have consistency going around because it will be, got that backwards, Tony. It will be, um, every other one will be that warmer white. So this one then will need to have the quarter inch trimmed off the edges, white added, and then retrimmed. So that will be ready to go and then I will just add on up here my little slide piece. That will give me something that can be quite long and I can start alternating how these things lie. So it's going to be, it will be a circle. It will come around to a circle because I'm using a consistent angle when I cut these, but it will be the, the edges of the circle will not be regular, I guess is what I am saying. So that's my next step, uh, steps, actually, I need to add this in and then 
do the white pieces here and add a slide up there. That is what is next on my agenda for the Dresden Blades. There were several comments. Thank you, I appreciate the comments. Um, you all have some really good ideas, so I always enjoy reading them. And of course, I'd be happy to answer any questions that I can. There were three comments in particular that asked to see something a little different on each of these. So I would like to share those with you. First of all, Michelle asked if, what I was going to, what color I was going to use for a background on this. And she was thinking I was going to go with black, but actually I was going to go with white. But because I like to try out your ideas and suggestions, because you often have, well, you always have good ideas. I decided I would try it out on black and it's very striking. It really makes these colors pop, which is very nice. So black is now on the table as a background. I will probably finish the whole circle blades before I make that final decision, but thank you, Michelle, for that question and comment. Next, Kathy was wondering about, she said she would like to see black strips in between instead of white. Now these are not going to be, let me do these closer together. And of course, if I did this on a black background, that would absolutely be an option. And that almost gives the eye more rest than the white. Hard to tell on this black background. I'm doing the black background first because I'm gonna to have to reset the camera and it's, <laughs> it's color lock. Otherwise this will look like a very dirty dull gray. So that is all of that on a black background. And then Marion asked about colored strips in between instead of white or black. And I think that would be an interesting idea as well. She suggested that these could be a consistent color all the way across so that it isn't fighting so much with these and these would still be the, uh, the real focus as those changed across there. So that absolutely is an option too. Um, I agree with her that I think it would want to be consistent so as not to compete with this or any of these for that matter. Just sort of a, a constant, again, rest stop for the eye going across. It expects to see that. Okay, that's good. And then the eye can move to a different place. So that's an option as well. Now I want to switch to a white background and try some of those out. So thank you, ladies, for those comments and suggestions. And here the blades are on a makeshift white background. This is just a piece of foam core. And this is how I had it laid out last week. Now with black strips in between on a white background, and these strips would be a little more narrow, of course. Let me, let me do this to do a better proportion of color here. And that would be kind of, oops, that's not what I want to do, would be interesting and fun. Now, the thing with doing a strip, these edging strips in a different color than the background is dealing with different lengths of these blades. Not insurmountable, but would I then want the black to go only as far as the shortest of the blades here? So it would be jogging along as I go because this one would be that length. That would be that length. We've got these in pretty much the same length. It's not going to illustrate anything, is it? And then this one would be, say, that length so that the black strips are, the ends of them are jutting around? Or do I want them to be the same length as the longer blade? Which again, it's going to be uneven because these longer blades are going to be 
different lengths up there. And of course the same holds true down here. And then again, they're going to be uneven going around. Um, and this, these would be, because I'll do a seam there, these will be turned under. So you aren't gonna have that jog in the middle of that. So that's the question that I would need to answer if I were doing these, this in black and the background in white. Same, of course, holds true for the reverse of that with the white strips on a black background. Then the colored strips. I probably would use a different color for that. It's a, a little bit dull for what I'm going for, but just in general. And of course, there would be the same question then whether I'm going to match up the ends of these or the longer ones, or I'm sure I'm in frame here, sorry about that. Or here's an idea. I don't think I like it, but here's an idea. <laughs> I could, you know what? I'm just gonna cut a narrow strip. I'll be back in a minute. All right, I'm back. We do like our what ifs and oohs on this channel. So <laughs> now I'm thinking, what if we were to angle this from that point to that point? So it'd be like that. Possibility, not sure I like it because then it, it does this whole V thing that I'm not sure I would like. Hmm. What do you think? I think that's, it would give it a different look for sure, but I'm not sure that I like it for what is in my mind's eye. And once I have something in my mind's eye, it, <laughs> it's hard to change its mind. So I think that the colorful strips on the white would be a cool idea. Of course, we have the same, where would these end? But I think that's not an insurmountable, I won't even call it a problem. I would call it an option. I would probably tend to go with the longer Matching it to the longer blades, actually, I think. I'm, hmm. I like the look, actually, but I don't, I don't think that look matches what I am looking to do with this piece. So on another piece, oops, I might in fact do this and be very happy with that other pop of color in there in between the blades. I don't think it's what I want for this piece, but it is an interesting idea. I like that idea, so thank you for that. I have a couple other thoughts for what I might do on future Dresden pieces just for a little different kind of look. This is probably how I'm going to proceed with this one. I don't know whether it will be a black or white background. Not sure yet, although I probably need to be thinking about that pretty soon because that will determine the color of strips in between. I don't think I want to do white strips on black background or the reverse. What I have in mind is white strips on a white background because that's what was originally in my head. It doesn't mean the others aren't good ideas, but I think I'm going to proceed with the, oh, here's an idea. Let me think about whether or not it's a good one. <laughs> what if I did half of it this way and then half of it with the black strips on a black background so that it it breaks in the center. I'd have to figure out what I'm doing down here. 
but that could be kind of fun where I've got a sort of positive negative, not really because these would stay the same, but the background in the strips would be different. That's a possibility. And some of these are things that I can explore and procreate without having to sew them and rip them out or do separate ones. So I might try that. Interesting. So thank you for the comments. Keep them coming. Questions, of course, keep them coming. Always happy to hear from you. I do read all your comments and I, I sometimes think about them for a while before I answer them or I try things out. So please don't think that I'm not reading all your comments. I am. Now I want to talk a little bit about what else I am up to this week. Later today, I will be starting an online class with Sheila Frampton Cooper, who is amazing as a teacher, both, well, I imagine in person, she, she does a great job online. I've taken a class from her before, and I'm also doing her block of the month as you go, uh, self-paced. I'm way behind, Sheila, sorry, <laughs> way, way behind. But I've also got a couple of other pieces and I just, I'm excited about the class. So I wanna share with you what I've been doing with Sheila's classes and what's coming up. So first of all, the first class that I took from her, um, she does sometimes improv, sometimes planned pieces that are very modern and lots of solids and hand dyed fabrics which I love, I've always loved those. So the first class that I took was on doing curves without pins, all of that, and it um, and kind of designing as you go. So you could start out with just a, a base module sort of a piece and then build out from that. Or you could build in various pieces and then put all those together, and that's what I opted to do. So I'll see if I can zoom out a little bit here. This is one of the pieces that I did in that particular class. She talks about color and balance and all sorts of things. So she covers all the bases and she's very patient and kind <laughs> and very helpful and really gives personal attention in classes too. So this is a second piece that I did for that. And then I will insert a photo up here of, at this point, I took it to Procreate, you know me and Procreate, and started designing where I was going out from here. So this is still in progress, but um, I really like this piece and I'm beginning to think, um, I'm redoing several rooms in my house and the guest room is going from a very natural woodsy kind of theme and it, it's going more modern. I've updated it, lightened it, and I think this may be the piece that hangs in the guest room. So I need to, <laughs> I need to get with it. Haven't named it yet, but um, I'm really, I'm, I really love this pop of coral in here and then the blacks and grays. And Sheila was very good about saying, you know, use various shades in here, don't just use a color you want different shade tints and shades of those colors so then i started also on her block of the month and this is still the first month this is really really sad and this one i did design well she's she gives you a template and you can follow that template and piece it together using your own color etc and have a perfectly beautiful piece. Um, I didn't do that. I went to procreate again <laughs> and added things in and adapted it. So my piece is going to look similar, but different from what hers started out as. And these are the pieces that I am putting together so far. Oops, this goes this way. And again, I will insert a photo in here so you can see the design I'm going for. And then I've got to start on the leaf. This is one where I need to check the tension for one thing. This is one um, where I thought I had something I wanted and then I changed my mind. So let me pull out that piece I rejected. 
ultimately. So this was the start of that leaf. And you know, it's okay, but these didn't line up the way I wanted them to. And I decided I wanted this darker color. So that piece is going to go somewhere else. Anyway, so that's another bit that I am working on. Then the class that I am starting today with Sheila is using the applepiecing apple technique. And I have a design in mind. I've been playing with scribble diagram or scribble drawings, so um, I do it in Procreate, but you could do it on paper where I just scribble like we used to in preschool or kindergarten. Well, we didn't have preschool in my day. Um, kindergarten, and then just starting to pick out the shapes and apply colors to them and then add other things to it. And I'll put some photos up here so you can see the progression of what I did. And I've done, I think, three or four of them so far. And I've chosen one that I plan to do in this class, pending Sheila saying, nope, that's not going to work, or here's how you might want to change that. But here is the scribble diagram, first of all, and then the initial coloring and choosing of the pattern. So I would, in the scribble diagram, I wouldn't just color in every space. I might expand the space and combine several of them together and add it in some color then. And some spaces I didn't color in, just left them as negative space. And then I added more shapes and details to them. And here are a couple more that I did. This one is uh, turned into a dragon. And then this one is just a bright, happy shapes that I also like a lot. Anyway, as I mentioned, we went to Missouri Star Quilt yesterday and in the Penny Building there is just a whole wall of solids. And I use Bella Solids, so I had a long stretch of, stretch of Bella Solids to choose from. And this is the palette that I chose for this particular piece. And let me spread these out a little better so you can see them. So I'm, I think I'm pretty happy with that. I also have other solids down in my stash, and if it turns out I need something different, then hopefully I can pull something from my stash as well. But I wanted to have plenty of fabric to play with, so I have a yard of each of these, and hopefully, if I don't do a gigantic piece, <laughs> this will work for that. So I'm really excited about that class, and I'll keep you updated on what we're learning and what I'm doing. And uh, I will put Sheila's website down below. If you want to do her online classes, um, I will actually put a link to that page because it's actually on a different site. But take a look at Sheila's work. She just does some beautiful things and her students do beautiful things too. One last thing is this is for folks who know me from my sort of pre-ultra-modern things. This is a piece I found yesterday that is from Jason Yenter at In the Beginning. And I just love this. And if you knew me before, you know that I'm going to be doing a one block wonder with this because, you know, I don't have 15 already started downstairs that <laughs> I haven't finished up yet. So I'm excited about this. I, I really like this. One of my friends who was a student in one of my One Block Wonder classes um, was looking, she felt like doing another One Block Wonder. So uh, she actually finishes them before she goes on to another one. Can you imagine that? She was looking for a good fabric for OBW yesterday. And I saw this one and called her over and she said, that that's really pretty, but I don't like purple or pink. So I thought, all right, then I'll get it, and someday I will get around to doing that. All right, that's it for today. Sorry, it's a little shorter than usual, but I wanted to post some update things on what else I'm doing, and 
just show you a couple of things that I'm going to do with the dress. And this is one of those sort of experiments, trials that I am going to finish. So it's, it's added to my list of blocks that I need to keep updating you on. And I will keep working on this one. I really like this one a lot. I've always loved Dresden plate. So this is just going to be right up my alley. That will be it for this week. I need to do some editing on this and get it posted and have some lunch. I will see you next week. Thank you for sharing your time with me today. I hope to see you next week. And I don't know what we're doing next week. Maybe I'll do that alternative Dresden plate kind of thing I'm thinking about. Or maybe we'll do something completely different. But I hope to see you next week. In the meantime, be well, be safe, be happy, be quilting. Peace out.